<laughs> Welcome back. Um, and we're going to talk about vertical and horizontal thinking. Um, I think most of us do the horizontal thinking. Um, that's normally about what is my logo going to look like? What is my website going to look like? And those are things that are important, but it's not making money. There's no income. It's not growing your business. Um, a lot of entrepreneurs that we talk to now, we try to get them to think vertically. So if you think about digging for gold, where's the best gold? Where's the best diamonds? It's deep down. So when you start thinking vertically, then you start, but why? Well, I want to make money. Why do you want to make money? Well, I want to be financial, I want financial freedom. Why do you want financial freedom? Well, I want to go on holidays and be with my family. But why do you want to be with your family? Why do you want... And then I thought, that, well, actually, I don't know. And that's where we start to go deep and get to your why. It's not only to have financial freedom. It, it, it doesn't mean anything, financial freedom. Um, I think we said in the past, if you want to earn a million dollars, but you have to work 18 hours a day, is that financial freedom? I don't think so. For me, it's not. Um, I think financial freedom for us is that we can sit in Bali with our computer, Zoom or Skype, and still make a million dollars. So we don't have to be in one place. We don't have to work 18 hours a day. And we can do it anywhere we are, or anywhere we want to be. So that's financial freedom. But we only got there by asking why. Why? And why? Go deeper. It's really challenging. I think any parent who has a child will remember that age, around about three, where it feels like you're getting... 50 at least whys a day and you eventually get left off the hook by just going because I said so. Um, but it's really that kind of process. It, it sounds easy uh, and it gets frustrating but what the process of, of going vertical and asking why does is it really brings you to a point of knowing yourself and understanding what drives you. A good example and it's we digress a little bit, but it's something that's really helped us in terms of knowing our why mm. is we made a decision to leave our home country. And it was a difficult decision. It was a decision to leave family behind. It was a decision to leave friends behind. In my case, it was a decision to go to a country I'd never visited before. And good jobs. Yeah, new mm. jobs. Uh, luckily, a, company that, a country that spoke English, but we knew no one. It was completely new and... What we decided very firmly before we immigrated was we needed to understand exactly what was motivating us to do it. We needed to know why, because we knew that things were going to go get tough. And there were some days which were incredibly tough yes. and where we really felt homesick. But understanding that why is what kept us motivated and what kept us going. Um, and chatting to other people that have had similar experiences, we've often said to them, what are the reasons, what's the why that you left? And understanding that why helps you overcome any challenge because it's a bigger or higher purpose. Yes. There, there's a bigger picture. Um, so sort of going when we move to a good job, a what doesn't really cut it when you yeah. need to dig deep. But understanding your why really helps you to be mentally resilient and dig deep when you need to. But I think also in business, if you know your why, um, is when those challenges come. Because there's no perfect business. I think you need to state that. There is no perfect business. Um, I mean, you can have the perfect building, um, the perfect tenants, and tomorrow the council put a highway next to your building. There's no, it's not your choice. It was not your decision. It happens. So... I think you need to realize that there's no perfect business. But if you know your why, it helps you to drive, to just fight that little bit harder to get what you want. And when those challenges come, you know what you need to do to overcome that so you can live your why. I think having a very clear why also helps you stay on track. One of the things that we talk a lot about is authenticity, really being true to yourself, true to your values. And if you understand your why, and if other people in the company understand the why, decision making then becomes much easier yeah. because you simply go, well, is, is that in line with what we truly believe? Yes. If it is, absolutely. If it isn't, you have a clear answer. It, it makes, I think, for a very, very strong culture. 
if people know what the company believes in. If you look at companies like Google and Apple, um, Amazon, those people got a very strong why, and they got a very strong company culture. Um, and I think those people are happy in their, in, their, in their jobs because they know exactly what's expected from them, um, and they know why they do things. Um, the one thing that I believe strongly in is, is about certainty. Um, if you go to the doctor, for example, um, and you're not, you don't know what's going to happen, that, that anxiety you have, um, that scared, but if you know exactly what's going to happen, you can cope with it. So when there's certainty, there's a why, people cope better, you get more productivity out of them, you're more successful, and the results are better. Certainty and why, I think, is also connected. Absolutely. A lot of companies have a vision and a mission statement. Yeah. And certainly after having read this book, it's made us go back and look at our vision mm. and our mission because your vision should very clearly communicate your why. Yes. I think in many instances, vision communicates what and how rather than, than digging deep yep. and going why. And I think that's probably something that we'll be working on with our clients in the next couple of weeks is really just revisiting the yep. vision and mission and making sure that it really clearly states why. And, and I agree with you there. So many people that we deal with, they've got a vision and a mission, but it's a few words on a piece of paper. It doesn't mean anything. If you don't communicate that vision with your staff, if you don't communicate the end result that you, you want with your staff and they can't help you to get there, it's so much more effort and money and time you have to put in to get there. So by getting your why, have certainty, have a good company culture, communicate with them, you will just get where you want to be much quicker. But again, that is not always part of company culture. I think what's really fascinating from the book about your why is also the fact that once you know your why and there's a cause larger than yourself, other people are going to, with the same beliefs, are going to resonate towards you. And the fascinating thing about it, I, I use the company Apple again, Simon really does talk about other companies <laughs> too, but Apple's just such a great example is that they really regard it almost more as a social movement because people mm. who believe what Apple believe will go out and buy the next product, not for the company, but for themselves. And they'll share their experience and their yes. enthusiasm and their beliefs, again, nothing to do with the company, but for themselves because they identify, again, as people that think differently. Yeah. So I think one of the great things about really understanding your why is that you create momentum so that people out there become ambassadors for your cause. These are people you may never meet, but they are a loyal following and they influence other people. Again, not for the company's sake, but because it's something that they believe in to further their cause. So adding to that is that when you have a strong why, you will have a strong brand. And when you have a strong brand, people will come to you. You will not have to go out anymore and ask and say, buy my products. Um, Coca-Cola, um, um, again, Apple. People come to you. It just makes it so much easier to do business. So your why and branding, again, gets connected. Mm -hmm. I think what we'll do when we come back after the break is chat a little bit more about how personal branding relates to why and, and how to include this in your personal brand.